Think we can cooperate and make a top 10 list? Let's work together for once. Nah, let's make separate lists. (laughs) These are our top 10 cooperative games. Mm -hmm. That may include semi-cooperative games. It definitely will on my part. As long as most people are working together. Right, or working together at some point in the game. Oh, okay. And then all of a sudden, all heck breaks loose. I had four cooperative games that are on my top 10 games of all time. I have removed those from this list. I did not do the same. But um, then again, there, were, there wasn't a lot of crossover. I'll explain that later. All right. And then I also just want to mention that we love legacy games in this household. And a lot of them are cooperative, such as the Pandemic Legacy series. Mm-hmm. I would have filled my whole list with those kinds of games if I'd put them here, but I do have a separate list on this channel, which are my personal top 10 legacy games. If you want to find out about those, they are there. They are not on this list. It was from a couple of years back, but it's still kind of true. I mean, there's not much has changed. Right. You didn't add Rise of Queensdale to it, though. All right. So my honorable mention, do you have any? I have two. Oh, well, go ahead with one. Uh... I don't know if you'll talk about it later because you and I played this game a lot. It's called Decorum. Oh, it's not even on my short list. Oh, you hated that experience, clearly. Anyway, that was my... No, I didn't find it. Honorable mention. (laughs) I didn't find it. I have played that game so much. I like that game a lot. It probably would have made my list if I had thought of it. Oh, okay. Well, that's one of my honorable mentions. Decorum, we're moving in together, or you're running through the story of a bunch of people who live together, and you're arranging their house in a way. The story is not a story, in my opinion. Yeah, there is a campaign in the box, but you can just play this game normal. You don't have to play the campaign. Yeah. So. You have four rooms. You're trying to decide what color should the room walls be, and you all have preferences about what they should be. And then and once you're being it, passive aggressive with each other. That's it's true. Designed by a Minnesotan on purpose. <laughs> on the box it says the passive aggressive game of cohabitation. Yeah. And there's a new version out about moving out or something like moving that. Moving in, moving, moving out, moving out. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Let's um, play it. <laughs> well, <laughs> that'll be for later. But that's one of my honorable mentions. Decorum. Okay. My, I only have one honorable mention this time, and this is a really unique card game where you hold your cards facing away from you. This is Hanabi. In the fireworks game? Mm-hmm. Oh. Or in America, a lot of people say Hanabi. I say Hanabi, yeah. Uh, according to someone who speaks the language, they told me it was Hanabi. So Hanabi. that's what I say now. But whatever it's called, it's this game where you're holding your cards facing away from you. So I can see everybody else's cards and I can't see mine. You have to cooperate to put down a first a one, then a two, then a three. And not blow up the bomb. Right. Well, yeah, the firework. There is a theme of fireworks, but the theme is pretty much not there at all. So it could be anything. Yeah, that game, you got to play with the right group. It's uh, absolutely can't be I won't frustrating. Play with my husband, he cheats. <laughs> yeah, because you just want to win. It's like, who's going to tell on us? Seriously. Um, my honorable mention, my last honorable mention, I guess, is The Adventures of Robin Hood. Oh. It's a co-op game that has several stories going on. I think it's like an eight-part story playing out the tales of Robin Hood, but it does it in a way on a board that can be flipped to tell different stories. and You're Taking out little parts of the board and flipping yeah. them over to make a, a soldier suddenly appear, and then when you kill him, mm-hmm. you knock it back the other way or whatever. Yeah, so um, I really enjoyed our playthrough of it. Uh, Joe and I played through it. Uh, We recorded it, but it didn't make it to the channel because one of the episodes got lost. It was during a transition time of the channel. I think that was actually at the time we were like changing the table out and all a bunch of stuff was happening. So um, I don't know if they'll ever see the light of day because it doesn't need to. It's fine. We had a good time with it, and that's enough for me to even mention it here. But yeah, The Adventures of Robin Hood, honorable mention. Amazing. I have played it. I liked it. All right. My number 10. Oh, we're on to the list. Unless you have any more of those uh, honorable mentions you want to throw in? Uh, Just 10. Okay. (laughs) Number 10 is Dwarf Romantic, the board game. This is... I've played it. I have it. Based on the video game of the same name, which Mm -hmm. 
I have. I've played. I, I don't really get the appeal of it. Per it's se. just relaxing to just go blink, boom, boom, blink, boom. Yeah, I'm just not a sense. person who likes relaxing. I'm high strung. Right. But in this version, the the video game, I mean, the board game. I mean, you're you're doing tile laying, which is one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you are trying to meet certain goals. You know what they are ahead of time, and. Um, yeah, it's just a simple little filler game, honestly. Not much to it, but I like how you work together in it, even though I suck and I always make the team lose a lot of points. But yeah, yeah. romantic. This is one of those games that work well as a solo game. A lot of co-ops will be guilty of that, and it's fine, but you just got to realize that that's just the way it's going to be in some of these co-ops, which is probably why often on these, these lists I'm going to prefer semi co-ops mm. but anyway my number 10 is a game that has like four different versions at this point i've only really played the first version and i kind of like what it did it's horrified that was on my short list it would have been number 13 yeah i really like the mini games they kind of put it into the monsters that you choose um so it makes for a lot of replayability and now that there's four versions of this that makes like what 24 different monsters you can play with possibly i don't know i haven't played the other ones yet but um, I'm interested in possibly getting some of the monsters I like to play or like to see played. And, you know, with Halloween coming up, that's going to be a good one breakout. Horrified. Yeah. Available at Target, recently, probably. Again, as soon as I saw it the first time, I was like, oh, a mass market game? Right. What is this? Now, you know, I did that thing that so some picky. gamers do of like, I don't play Target exclusives, yeah. <laughs> but it's actually a good game. It it's, is. It's a very kind of pandemic y kind of thing going on. It is. It's a lighter one. Mm -hmm. All right. My number nine, I'm pretty sure, is not going to be on your list anywhere. <laughs> not if Melissa had anything to say about it. <laughs> this is Escape Curse of the Temple. It's not. All right. This is a game that takes exactly 10 minutes, and you are rolling dice. I don't just like as it. fast as you can. Uh, and if you roll a certain shape, that die is locked until someone comes along and helps you. You can also help yourself. But if you get them all locked, you got to have a friend come help you. And you're constantly, you're all trying to roll the right dice to move through this dungeon. The tiles are coming out randomly to find certain elements to escape the temple. But you're playing with a soundtrack. It's a 10 minute long soundtrack. And there's certain it comes parts with a CD. <laughs> there's certain these days you just pull up the YouTube video, but yeah. you know, um, there's certain points in the game where you'll hear like a door slam. And that means everybody has to hurry like you weren't already hurrying and run back to the first room or otherwise something bad happens. Maybe you lose a die. I don't remember exactly the details. There's a lot of yeah, expansions, yeah. a lot of versions of this. One of them makes you put your hand on your head. It's just all kinds of cuckoo stuff. Um, but it's really great fun and it's only 10 minutes. I don't have it, but I'll play it. I used to. It's been called. Um, it's fine. I actually prefer the BGA version because the rolling of the dice was something I never really liked in the physical version. Like the dice will jump around all over the place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm not. It's not for me, but on BGA, I can get behind it because. As long as it's a good implementation of it, it's it's not a complete implementation right now on BGA. I believe it's still in alpha. So and has been for like two years, and probably will never leave it. But <laughs> but it, yeah, it's such a slow project for them to work on. But once it gets to be, once it starts working, I'm down to play a ten minute game for that. So I think it exists best there. My number nine is a game from Disney. It's called Disney Animated. I don't, I don't know this game. I've never even heard of this. So in this game, <laughs> you're That's pretty weird. Yeah. So in this game, you're an illustrator for Disney or you all are. And the theme of the game is that the bad guys have come to life and don't like the way they have been animated into bad guys. And so you, you have to put them in their place and make sure they stay the bad guys or something like that. Um, it's, it's, if you're familiar with Arc Nova system of the, the way they take actions one through five, then you, you'll be familiar with Disney because 
it's a co-op where there's the one through five actions where on your turn you're going to take one of those powerful actions but beyond that it has wonderful components um pretty easy to play i've had a good time with it i'm willing to get it out again uh, disney animated amazing if you like disney this might be the best disney game out there way better than villainous all right well my number eight <laughs> was nominated for a spiel de jars or maybe even won one i don't remember but uh the first time you and i played it it went poorly very poorly because melissa was there oh we're gonna have a crossover <laughs> Once we removed her from the equation, it went a lot better. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Different. <laughs> uh, this is Magic Maze. <laughs> this is another real-time game where you're racing against this time a sand timer. Mm-hmm. Your fantasy characters in a mall. For some reason. Uh, and you're trying to escape the mall. You have to find your weapon and then escape the mall. But the shtick of this is... I can only ever move the creatures this way and that way. And you can only move them this way and that way and use elevators or whatever, escalators. So you're constantly, you oh, and you're not allowed to speak. Right. So I'm thinking, let's move orange over there. So I move the orange guy and then I need someone else to move it to the side because I don't have that power. But they're thinking, let's do purple. Purple's right here next to this thing. But I'm not thinking purple. So I'm, they have this little red token. You put it in front of someone when you want them to do something. Yep. Just lets them know. We're watching you. We're expecting things from you. But the neat thing about the game is the first game is the simplest. Every game you play, they add more and more mechanisms into the game. So eventually, like, one of the creatures can shrink down and go through tiny little doorways. And there's teleportation and just all kinds of stuff. I've still not done all of it. I like this game, though. Yeah, I really like this one. I don't like it online. I only like it in person. Um, so it's an alpha on Board Game Arena, so it's not complete yet. Um, VGA, please, please don't come for us for saying that. <laughs> it's fine. Um, but well, I don't know. I think it kind of can work online. I, I don't love it either way. So it's it's fine. It's okay. I Great. Play. Well, what's your number eight? My number eight is Codenames Duet. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, I figured. All right, back to so you. So my number seven is Oathsworn. Don't think you've played this game before. I haven't. It's a big, chunky co-op campaign game with crazy, ridiculous miniatures. This is like the peak of excess Kickstarter stuff. A friend of mine backed this. This is so kooky. I mean, these minis are just so ridiculous that come out of this box. It, it has kind of two phases to it. Um, something kind of like a Frost Haven. There's like a city phase where you're like making decisions and trying to do use your time wisely. And then there's the fight. Mm-hmm. And the fight is this big strategic thing on a huge giant mat. And you're, you know, the, the monsters are kind of like on an AI. They're, they move in a certain way and they have a pattern to how they attack you. And they're constantly attacking you back every time you hit them. Your character's are trying to use their cards in a certain way. The cards, basically, as you use them, they go to different sides of your player mat. And to get them back, they have to basically make the whole revolution around your mat back to the beginning again so you can get them back. Less powerful ones come back faster. More powerful ones you have to put, like, over here. So they have to make the whole trip. So there's the way of figuring out how to put your cards so that you can get the ones you need the most back the fastest Um, There's just a lot going on in this game. Uh, It's heavy duty and there's a bunch of different characters and there is some crazy decision making in there too. We ran into Hmm. a crazy decision like maybe after three or four games and we were just like, what? Hmm. Really? Okay. I guess we're doing that now. I don't know anything about this game. I know people like it a lot. So yeah, it's in the BGG top 100 already. It's crazy. Mm hmm. Uh, my number seven. seven is a beloved game. It's not in the top 100, though. This is Betrayal at House on the Hill. Yes. Is this on your list? 
No. It's not. Uh, so the third edition is the latest one that's out, but there's lots of versions out. There's the legacy version. The second ver- second edition, I think, was the most popular one, but the first one I ever played was the first edition. I mean, I did write legacy games like Pandemic Legacy, Betrayal mm-hmm. Legacy. I wrote that, so I kind of like excluded it just because of that. But That's fair. Yeah. Uh, but I, I guess I'm talking more about the, the third game. edition yeah. specifically because that's what's out. In fact, Betrayal at Baldur's Gate as well, I think, is the better version of it overall. Really good. It gives you that RPG experience. Um, but if it's Halloween, you got to play Betrayal at House on the Hill. It's a great game that you can play with new players, too. It's light. Everyone's helping each other for the first 75% of it and then someone goes off and becomes a traitor in most cases. We know this game has issues. We know it's not perfect. Of course. Yeah. But we also love it. Mm-hmm. Despite those things. It's like your sister or something. Your yep. annoying sister. She's yep. still your sister and you love her even though she's got issues. <laughs> Betrayal. Check it out if you haven't. All right. My number six is when you already mentioned Codenames Duet. Yeah. This Just mentioned it at number eight. The cooperative version of Codenames, which is a classic the superior game. version yeah. for me. I, I think it's better. I like it a lot better. I think it's better um, in all forms. Yeah, it's faster. I really like it with two players. You can play with groups on each side. I think I just, it works with more. I, I like the, the digital implementation as well. That's when it works best. Uh, at the table, two people. You're like, what are we gonna do? Codenames duet. Pull it out. It. It just. Is a great way to get two people like into the vibe of playing games. Despite the fact that it's co-op, you are still like you're doing your own thing on your side that no one else can help you with if you're playing mm-hmm. two players. And then your opponent, or I mean your partner, is doing their own thing in their own mind that they're trying to. So you're both serving clues about the same words. Yeah. Uh, it's the yoink and twist or whatever. The yoink and twist. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you call it. The bend and snap. The bend and snap. Uh, yeah, it's code names at its core. So if you don't like code names, you're not going to like it. But uh, I think it's the better version of code names because nowadays we have so many versions of it. Duet's the best one. But you can always throw in whatever cards. It's the rule set, really, is what it is. And there's a campaign in there. Have you ever done the campaign? No, and I probably never will. <laughs> yeah, me either. I don't see the. I could just play the game over and over again. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Codenames Duet. That's my number eight. Your number six. six. Mm-hmm. All right. My number six is a game I recently discovered. I didn't even know I was really looking for it. It's one that I've already I've seen around. Not super popular game from in the box games. It's called Subterra. It's a game about being trapped in a cave. Nice. Um, thematically speaking, it's really cool. If you have a deluxe version, it glows in the dark even. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, my die does glow in the dark, but I don't have the deluxe pieces that glow in the dark. Um, it's, it's really simple. It kind of replaces pandemic as a introductory to co-op for me. If someone were to say, do you think uh, pandemic is the best co-op to introduce? I'd be like, no, probably Subterra might be. Um, I think it's, more boots on the ground type of co-op where I feel like you're really embodying this character. Everyone I've played with has taken on the role and role played out their character a lot and everyone's had a good time with it. Everyone's trying to get out together, but there's always somebody who runs off and does their own thing and they get in trouble and just, it plays out like a little movie about a group that got trapped in a a cave and they got to find their way out. Cool. But yeah, Subterra. Sounds, Sounds good. Plays out in about 60 minutes. Really fun cooperative game. Okay, amazing. My current group, uh, we have someone who doesn't like co-ops, so we don't get to play them as much. I have. I live with someone who doesn't like co-ops. <laughs> eh, but we still make her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, number five. Uh-huh. This was also a Spiel nominee or winner. I have a few of those here. This one plays out over 50 sessions. 50 parts to a story. Um, Each one might take you several tries to beat. And I played through all 50 of the first box. Haven't played the second box as much, but this is The Crew. The Crew. That's one that I really want to get into more, but everyone in my game group doesn't 
do that. I know it's online, and I played through it a few times there. I really like Trick Takers, so. Yeah, it is a cooperative trick-taking game, and when I first heard that, I was like, that's not possible. (laughs) But the way it kind of works is you have a goal. Like, let's say the goal is that Jesse needs to take the pink six. We can't talk to each other about who has the pink six. We just have to figure out a way, even if Jesse doesn't have a pink card that's higher than six, for him to get that pink six. So we've got to, without talking about it, figure out how to do that. And then as you go, there's more and more goals and more and more people have to take certain cards or whatever. Uh, And you are allowed to just have some basic communication in very specific ways. Um, I like the way it does that. Can't play this game with my husband because he cheats. But yeah, I I really like this game. I obviously have played through the whole first box. So Um, have you got through Deep Sea? No, unfortunately, I've only played the Deep Sea one on BGA. My my physical copy is still in shrink. Hmm. The person that I played the first box with no longer lives in my city. So, yeah, I mean, I think the only shot I have at playing it through is on BGA. I have the first crew sitting behind me up there, and uh, I don't know if it's even been broken out. <laughs> but sad, sad. So that was your number five? Probably so. Yep. I'm, I'm getting into a light area because, I mean, the ones I've named aren't heavy by any means, but we're going lighter than that. My number five is So Clover. Oh, This is a co-op game where you're trying to guess some words here and there um but the cool thing about this is you're taking these two words and they got to mix together to form another word and everybody's got to guess um where those cards go based on the words you've written down it's a really really light game it is a co-op though it's it's almost a twist on code names because it's like instead of you thinking up the clue to associate two words or three words or five words you you're doing that with pre-prescribed words that you must find a connection between Mm -hmm. and you're just hoping somebody else can find that connection too because sometimes you're like i don't know how to connect pancake and tyrannosaurus you know it's like i don't know i don't own this game which is yeah it's pretty interesting that it's way up here and it's uh one i don't own Oh, man, I just thought of another co-op that I really, really love. I wasn't thinking of light games whenever I made this list, honestly. Oh, okay. We'll talk about it after. Okay, Okay. anyways, (laughs) my number four is a light game. Uh, This is another spiel. Uh, This is just one. And what number is that? Number four. It's my number four. Hey! Hey! Perfect crossover. So this is a game where one person doesn't know a word. Let's say it's cheese. Everybody else has to write a clue to help me guess the word cheese. So maybe Jesse writes mozzarella, Melissa writes cheddar. But if Joe writes the same word as anyone else, let's say Joe also writes mozzarella, he cancels out Jesse. So I don't get to see either of them. All I would see is cheddar. And then I guess money. But because they know they'll cancel each other out, they're not going to write mozzarella. So it might cancel me. They're going to write like Gruyere (laughs) or something. They're going to write like dairy. They're going to go even further, maybe even into like a special secret joke we have between us about cheese Mm -hmm. so that they make sure no one cancels them out. And so you're all working together to get this person to guess the word so you can get 13 points. We play this a lot on BGA with our online group. With our dig on our digital days on twitch.tv slash hardboard games. Yep. Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Central Time for that one, anyway. Um, yeah. Wonderful time. Wonderful implementation over there at BGA. Great to play at the table, too. Comes out yeah. often here. Yeah. Love it. It's got multicolored uh, markers. Well, that was my number four. So, what's your number three? Number three. This used to be like just off the edge of my top 10 of all time. So this is a semi-cooperative game, perfect for Halloween, called Dead of Winter. I didn't even consider that. You're right, it's a co-op. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, yeah, it is. It could, it can actually just be a co-op. There is a chance of having a traitor amongst you. This is a big epic zombie game. 
uh, you got dice in there, you're chucking, uh, very like Ameritrash, Ameritreasure style, and um, they have these cards in the game which are called... Well, those yellow cards, I don't remember what they're called. Oh, Cross, Crossroads. Crossroads cards. Yeah. So the person next to you is reading a Crossroads card, and it says, if they go to the library, this happens. So you just wait to see if they go to the library. Mm-hmm. Or if the literal person coughs, <laughs> read them this thing. You know, it's like they it might not, not happen at all, and maybe four out of five times it doesn't. But when it does, it's like, oh, stop. Hold on. Yeah, Something's something happening. To do. And it's really great because the game gives you a private objective, which oftentimes works against the objectives of the team. And so you're over there hoarding weapons, and there might be a traitor. That seems like something a traitor would do, Ronald. Mm. Why do you have five guns? (laughs) So it breeds (laughs) the thing to not trust each other, right? Yeah. So um, it's really special in that way, and I like it. Hmm. Dead of Winter, one I haven't broken out in a long time. Need to get it back out. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number three is kind of a, well, it's kind of on my top ten, but not really, even though we said it wouldn't be. But this one is different. It's Orleans Invasion. <laughs> Oh, it's the invasion portion of He's Orleans. bringing an expansion into the mix specifically because, yeah, it plays completely different. It's a co-op version of Orleans that sets up the game completely different, even as different designer behind its ink on Marcus brand designed of this, this design, that part of it. Um, and it brings in whole new boards to consider, but you're just playing in the Orleans universe you're doing the bag build and all that stuff but you're building them for a completely new reason uh so yeah it's a really cool way to play orleans whenever you've played it every other way for so many times um but that also has like a solo version in the box it has a it has a bunch of different versions in the box but this one invasion has a really cool co-op version of it i never played it yep played it a few times it's good stuff all right. Number two used to be in my all time favorites game of all time list, but it's not anymore. This is a game that's first helped get me into the hobby. And there's lots of different versions of it. This is Arkham Horror, the board game. Interesting. Uh, specifically, my interests lie with second edition and third edition. These days, it's almost all third edition. I don't think my second edition has come out in five to seven years Mm. Uh, but third edition we recently played through every single scenario that is currently on the market that we know of which is a lot of them because each game is really long this is a huge ameritrash dice chucking game uh you're trying to roll a five or six to succeed very very highly story based it's hp lovecraft cthulhu thing we love it because it's in the public domain <laughs> <laughs> so we can use it without anybody getting mad. Yeah. Um, and Nikki Valens was involved in the design of the third edition. And I love Nikki's product, Nikki's designs. Uh, you can see they put the mansions of madness clothes on the Arkham horror game to make it play more like that. And I do like that. And so that's why it's my number two. We play that here on the channel. You can check it out. Um, With one of the original designers of the first edition. Richard Lanius. Richard Lanius. If you do, or if you have no tomes, you gain one tome. Hey. Oh, look at that. You can just take books out of You're the You're just like room. a magic user. Books, you know, people, but people look at you and they don't think you're that kind of guy, but you are. I love books. <laughs> I love magic. I love Tommy guns. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the simple man. I yeah. love to shoot books with Tommy guns. <laughs> Long walks on the beach and Tommy guns. Chicken soup for the mobster soul. And that was my first time playing third edition, I believe. And uh, was it also your last time? Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah. So number two, this is a semi-co-op, although often it does turn out to be just straight co-op. It's a game involving some aliens. It's Nemesis. Mm. It's a big game of full of minis, full of different versions even. There's Retaliation coming out later this year or late, probably early next year at this point. 
and then I have two versions, Lockdown and Nemesis. It really goes alongside the Aliens movies in a way. So everyone's saying that Retaliation is all about the soldiers, so it's going to be more like the Aliens movie, whereas Nemesis is more like Alien, if you're familiar with that universe at all. But in this game, you you wake up on a ship, you have no memory of what's happening, and eventually you discover there's some aliens on board. And Then someone tries to blow up the ship. And someone either tries to blow up the ship, depending on what the mission is. Usually it's to get back to Earth and... Hopefully you don't bring home uh, a little baby alien with you. But it's a fun time. It always turns out to be an epic story being told. It does take a while to play. Every game I played ends up being like four hours just because we're really getting into the story of it. Uh, but it's it's a quick four hours to me. Really nice production. Nemesis. My number two. Amazing. All right. It's time for number one. Number one. Uh, I try to bring this out to one of my groups, and there's a guy there that's always like, no, Obscurio is better. Uh, no. <laughs> but I don't think that Obscurio is better. I think than, Rear Window is better. Than Mysterium. <laughs> Mysterium is my number one co-op. No, I don't agree with that. But uh, This is a game where one person is a ghost. They're trying to send dreams to the other people about a murder. Think Clue. You're trying to figure out who did it, where, and with what weapon. So everybody's getting these visions, but the cards are kind of like Dixit cards, if you've ever seen Dixit. It's not a one-to-one communication. You know, you have to really kind of look at these cards and try to understand, what is this ghost telling me? Mm-hmm. I don't know what this means. Oh, look, there's a tiny little, there's a tiny little, uh, you know, statuette right here. This reminds me of that. I'm like, no, it was red because the lady has a red <laughs> ball of yarn. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the the uh, code name situation where people just go off on their own. Mm-hmm. So this is a great this great moment because the ghost is not allowed to speak. I love being the ghost and serving up these confusing imagery uh, to people and see if they can figure out what the heck I'm trying to tell them. And if you work together well enough, you win. Has a really good digital implementation love the digital um, one. as far as the game like rear window and all those i mean mysterium is the better one so far for me have you tried obscurio i haven't but oh, don't talk to one of my game groups <laughs> I, don't, I mean i'd like to try it just to say i tried them all but i mean i tr- trust bgg scores and oh really <laughs> i mean to an extent whenever they're that drastic I think Obscurio is significantly lower than Mysterium. Well, it hasn't been out nearly as long, so. At this point, I mean, let's see, Obscurio. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it does matter. <laughs> it's 2019, 7.1 from. It's been out since 2019. I think that's plenty of time to find your find your group, and I guess you know found it in that one person that prefers that game to Mysterium. 7.1 is still a great score on BGG. Have you played Mysterium Park? No. Uh, that might be a nice, a better way to experience Mysterium to me. It's it's a smaller box anyway. I don't know. It's 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 up for debate whether Mysterium Park or Mysterium, what do you prefer as far as that goes? Uh, my number one used to be on my top 10 of all time, but in the most recent video has left it. It might be on her top. I don't remember. It's Mansions of Madness. That's in my top 10 games of all time, or otherwise it would have been my yeah. number one. Yeah, an easy choice for a co-op number one spot. You're telling a story, and it's it's usually a pretty good story. If not, I mean, just the stories that happen within the story makes for a good time at the table. It's a big box. It's a lot of things. It's a, It was very successful. If they stop making stuff for it, expect a third edition soon <laughs> in that case. Um uh, Find a friend who has it. You don't yep. need to buy all that stuff. Just no. Probably your friend has all of it already. Just go play with them. You don't need to invest in all that stuff. No. Nope. Come play with me. I have it all. <laughs> <laughs> but what top 10 or what 10 co-ops are on your list? What did we leave out on ours? Let us know that in the comments below. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't talk about Bandito at all. I considered Bandito, but not Bandito. There's two different versions. 
They're the same game as far as I know. Okay, great. But until next time, the box is is closed. closed. Bye.